you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. What's good, YouTube? I'm here with Pizza, who managed to make top eight at the latest IRL Ribbit with uh, his interesting Norlaris Vayu deck, uh, pretty similar to the one that I think did well in Europe. So, Pizza, first off, I want to start by asking why you chose to play this degenerate pile <laughs> that you brought. Well, there was a nine of us thing at the Airbnb, Airbnb, all of us, like, from the Discord, and the night, or Thursday night, we had to play for the rooms, and I was, <laughs> I've been testing for the past month Diva Heroes, like, I, I'm from LA, and then we had a PS5 tournament, and I topped eight with Diva Heroes, and I liked the deck, and I was pretty sure I was using it for this event, but I lost to Ryan and I, the solo bedroom, uh, with Diva here, he, he uh, soloed me with Vanity Speed in game three, and then I was like, I don't know about this deck. And then people started showing up, and then I started playing this deck as kind of like to have fun as a meme. And I actually wanted to see if it did anything, and then I started cooking everybody, and I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. And I was known for making that first Vayu Dark Dragon deck back when Edison started. Yeah, so, at, um, at Ribbit 1. 2022 I remember yeah you uh you got like third with that deck or something yeah i beat you on the way there yeah you did <laughs> so, i remember that that was, was painful so i was like i was like maybe bring back the little spice and then so the european guy that's what i was like he's on to something and yeah it seems pretty consistent also the i've been looking at the side decks and people have been cutting dd crow or cutting it to one and i was like it might just be a good meta call yeah i've noticed that as well there's a lot less dd crow going around uh so Anyway, do you want to talk a little bit about what you faced, what your matchups were, how the rounds went? Yes, I actually wrote down my matchups. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, so... So round one, I lost to Frog Heroes, which is, like, one of the worst matchups because after you Sky Scores, they have, like, Treeborn, and they have, like, kind of better top decks. And they actually still side DD Crow. Uh, so I lost to him, and then round two, I played against Dark Plants, and I lost game one. Which I was like, oh shit, I'm about to go O2 drop. But we made the comeback, then played Zombie Heroes, beat him. Bayou Turbo beat them. Frog Heroes again beat him. Mocking of Frogs, which was Ryan and I. Somehow we both got paired up at 4 1, and I beat him. Uh, then I lost to Disaster Dragons. He was third after Swiss. Uh, Koki Mero Drago put in work. I uh, beat Hero Beat. I got paired up the final round which I think was a big difference to get top 16. Uh, and then top eight, I beat the second seed, which was Bayou Turbo, where I kind of just opened retarded game one. And um, game three, I don't know, I actually made a mistake game three, but it worked out. And then I lost to Murray in top eight, which was, it was it went to game three and he did Blackwing things, but I was really happy. I just want to get the mat badly. Yeah, I mean, so, badass mat. I'm showing yeah. it off for the camera here, but... Well, this is actually... This is the Moreno Valley mat. Oh, Shout out to Magic Con. That is Con. the Moreno Valley. Yeah, the homie Magic Con was like, use this when you go to Orlando, and they gave me a lot of power, so thank you, Magic <laughs> Con. Well, anyway, uh, that's about enough going over that. Let's see yeah. the deck profile. Let's see all the cards, um, and we can talk about it, so... So, the best monster in the deck is Dark Creator. That card's nuts. Uh... Like, a lot of times you're not Sky Scorching in this deck. Like, you want to, obviously, but it's a 45-card deck, and you're just not consistently opening it. But you're going to get the Darks in the Graveyard, and this guy just comes out and just does so much work. So, yeah, the best monster. And then my favorite monster is Sky Scourge. Uh, you run 3-3 three and because three of trade-in. But, yeah, this is the namesake of the deck. You're just trying to Sky Scourge him. And then Fan of Chaos... Which you would think is always picking Sky Scorch, but a lot of time you're copying Dark Creator and Dark Arm. This card is obviously very good. Uh, and then what the European dude came up with was Bayou is just so good in this deck. Like it helps you grind. It's way more consistent than the Dragon version where you're really just trying to gold start from Future Vision. How'd you feel about the one Elfin? Uh, it's like really good. Like I'm always sending this one first with Greffer. Uh, 2500 is like a lot better than 2300 when for Armor Master. Uh, it's like a just obviously over all the 2400s and it crashes and I don't know. And then also if you get an arm wing on board, you can just normal summon Elfin from your hand. So I really liked it a lot. All right.
Um, that and the triple Greffer and the Arma. Uh, I think this is a really good ratio because, you know, the value package and then even discarding Noralis. Or you actually, I mean, obviously, one of the main plays you're doing is you're specially in Greffer and then pitching and then summoning Fan of Chaos and Nuke. But Armageddon Knight's really good to just summon off Dark Creator. Yeah, it's good to have an option off the reinforcement of the army to go to Arma. Yeah, and also the new package, the Lightsworn Engine. Uh, I mean, you're mostly just playing this. Well, the mill, but you're mostly just playing it for the draw engine. How did you feel about just playing five for the solar recharges and stuff? I mean, We're, I guess you have Rhoda plus charge. Yeah, exactly. You're really playing six with Rhoda, and actually that makes a difference because Aaron being a warrior is so good. So you're playing six, and uh, the ratio actually seems right. And then Raikou outs problematic stuff like Vanity's Fiend, and Lila helps you clear the back row before you nuke. So these were actually like really good picks. Aaron's Aaron's attacking actually doesn't really come up much. It's mostly that you can just search her off Rhoda to pitch for solo recharge. What would you think about Jane instead of like adding Jane? Do you think it would oh, be Oh, as a warrior? Yeah, because it's a warrior light sworn as well. Yeah, I would consider that. I mean, this outs it's like, the soft lock of Substitute, which yeah. is a thing. But it's like Jane gets over stuff, like, like Alias and whatever. Yeah, that actually... I mean, <laughs> it's funny. Aaron Mill's an extra card, which actually could make a difference. But that does, yeah, that is true. I do like the idea of testing Jane out. It does seem like a beater could be good. Mm. So that could be something. Um, the two hand traps. Gore's is obviously better after you nuke. Yeah, you don't want to draw track after yeah, Norris. But like round two, I won because I was able to wall off with the 3K Trigodia. Like the Titanium couldn't run over it. And he does, like, you can send, you can discard Noralis or whatever to take an 8-star, like, I like Trigodi a lot. I cite it out a lot too, though, just because it's like one of like the weaker cards in the deck. Uh the be like, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like everyone was play like winning on stream with Dark Arm. Like, this is like so dumb. Would you know. say all the top four decks played Dark Arm? They definitely did. Like Dark Arm, everyone knows it's like Dark Arm format. But uh, Sork, that was the like the one spice I added was like, the deck was forty four, and I was like, I don't know, you run. You pitch lights, like, why not run Sorcerer? And it came up a lot, like, obviously you don't want to open it. It's, like, one of the bricks opening, but in all the grind games, he's really good. Um, once you summon him naturally, Dark Creator can just special summon him. Uh, it's I really liked him a lot. Uh, Necrogarna, play the cards you want to mill. Uh, Necrogarna was really good. Play was even better. Like, you, you actually do synchro a lot with Greffer. Um, and then, yeah, the six-star synchros are really good, so. And then you synchro with Armoring, too. And then the last monster is Trooper, which is another beater. You mill three. If he lives for a turn, you mill three again, like. Was the European build on Trooper? Yeah, he was. Okay, I didn't and fully remember that. I don't think I would have thought of it, but it's just so good. Uh, and obviously, like, they, it replaces itself. You know, Trooper's good. Just milling a lot is good. And then the reason I love the deck, you run three trade-ins. Yeah, the Which draw is power is crazy. The same as before. Like this is this is still the same draw package from before. Like there's the dragon package, but now yeah, you have the recharges now. Which also card destruction is. You open this, it's like makes it so much more consistent to get to nuke turn one. Uh but yeah, now with this engine, it's just you just get three more draw cards. I love it, and then Rhoda's just another light sworn target. So and obviously still gets you Greffer, but. So much drawing in this deck is so tight. And then the two back row, I mean, usually if you go second, you want one of these to still be able to nuke consistently. Uh, foolish. You mostly fool it. I mean, you can foolish anything, obviously. And then the best card, Burial. I was that drawing this nuts. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in any grind game. I mean, Value Turbo players already know you draw this in the grind game, you win. So that's it for the main deck. 45 cards. How do you feel about 45? Uh, well, at first when I, when I first saw the list and I saw it was 44, I was like, I don't know. But you see the hands, like, you have six different or eight different draw cards. So you're bound to see at least one of them. Hmm. And you're milling a lot. And then, I don't know, every I don't want to take out any of these cards. Like, <laughs> like when you're grinding. It's all too good. Yeah, they all come up. So, I don't know, it'd be very hard to cut anything. 
Uh, the extra deck's like pretty standard. You have the Vayus, I mean, the Vayus Synchros. Everyone knows these. It's a good ratio. Uh, the three Synchros I use the most are these, just because play with the four stars and then uh, Arm Wing into Dark End is, happens a lot. So those are like the, the MVP ones and then, you know, standard, just good Synchros. And then the Chimera Tech because I have side during the side deck. <laughs> and then the side deck, which you'd be surprised, but it comes up a lot like, so Cyber Dragons for any machine, like you're only using this for machines, not as a beater, because you're really, you're really trying to combo or you're trying to Dark Creator. So not bringing in versus like Hero Beat or anything? No, like I, I just feel like I'm trying to fight that is not a losing battle. Just for Ryan and I, then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for my one. Uh, two books. Um, you're mostly doing this for like Christie or Vanny's Fiend, which like so many decks side deck Vanny's Fiend really do need book. Didn't you, you in your Ribbit one list you played like Vortex in the slot or something? Yeah, I did run Vortex just because um, that was also like an out to absolute zeros and stuff. Yeah. Because with with that deck, like Absolute Zero just kind of owns you, and then like light, uh, Lightning Vortex, like it's not getting rid of it because you have to make a board. But Book of, Book of Moon just seems like probably a better answer. Like, I don't, like in this deck, you're grinding a lot more, so all the resources in your hand matter. Yeah. So I don't really want to pitch a card. Uh, Soul Release, I didn't get to really cite it much this weekend, but I, ideally, it's like for Light Sworn. And uh, kind of guess with frogs. Um, I decided it in, I didn't really draw it, so I don't know how good it is. Mm. Uh, this card is really good, obviously. We for... just hate frogs. Yeah, huh? <laughs> we, we definitely hate frogs. It's very tough. but And then you run this over pulling the rug because um, you need the floodgates because you're just trying to get to combo. You're not trying to trade. So you just have to survive long enough to get to that. And then once you have a board, obviously you just want this to stick. And then, oh, one more thing. Like, people are citing out their back row removal, so these will just stick on the board. Yeah, that goes for all the floodgates, kind of. Yeah, more floodgates, two oppressions. Um, I cited this against, like, uh, Diva Heroes, against the Dark Plant deck, anything. Obviously, you don't cite it against, like, Vidi Turbo, but um, I liked it. It's another floodgate. Uh I decided against Disaster Dragons, but Kokimero Drago kind of did me in. Uh, two bottomless. This is for like aggro matchups like Black Wings. I didn't side it against Heroes just because, I don't know, Gemini Spark just is a card, but I liked it for Black Wings. And then even uh, the Frog matchup for like Vandies or Kaios. Uh, this came in a lot. Obviously, that card's crazy. Yeah, you you can make a board and this protects you. Uh, yeah. And then the last card, which came in a lot too, was Mirror Force, just because, like I said, people are setting out their spell and trap removal, and this usually gets you a plus one, plus two, and outs the problematic cards. Yeah, no one thinks to play around Mirror Force in this matchup. Yep. All right. Any final things you'd like to add? Any shout outs you'd like to give? Well, shout out to the team Space Jam back home. Especially shout out to Magic Con for the mat. And then shout out to everybody at the Airbnb. It was a lot of fun. And then it really helped me decide to switch decks. So, yeah. Uh, best timeline. Let's see. Extra shout outs to Masha and um, Ten Foot. I'll link their channels in the description. Um, so, definitely check them out. All right. That's going to close out the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Let me know what thought in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.